The manwa starts with two maids mocking the duchess. As the duchess is walking through the halls, they start laughing at her. When the maids pass by the duchess, one of the maids states to the other maid that they should move so that they aren't in her way. However, one maid named Ellie turns around to look at the duchess. She decides not to make fun of her as she feels sad for her. One of the maids notices this and asks Ellie what she's doing. She also tells her to run. However, Ellie doesn't listen and continues to stare at the duchess while the other maids are running away. Meanwhile, the duchess sighs and wonders how many days it has been since she came here. She is aware that at first, she was simply flustered to be in this new world. She was surprised by the people's mocking attitude towards her, and at one point she was angry. However, she's gotten used to it now. The duchess further wonders if it has been one week already. We then learn that this place is not the duchess's homeland. She was born and raised in South Korea. The duchess's original name was Ha Jung Park. All her life, she felt pressured by what others thought of her. When she got a job within the accounting team at a corporation, her tendency to care for what others thought didn't change. Ha Jung was afraid of losing favor, so she did any job that her superior asked her to do, no matter what it was without complaint. She worked overtime to meet deadlines. The projects that her coworker took but dropped became her responsibility. Her coworker felt bad for doing this all the time to Ha Jung and mentioned to her that it's because he's busy. However, this was all a lie since he took credit for the work that he passed off for her to do. But because she cared about what others thought, she never said no. One of the projects everyone turned down was passed on to Ha Jung because it was high risk and had little hope for success. As she always did, she did her best and faced it head on. However, the project failed gruesomely and the company took a huge hit. When the project failed, Ha Jung's boss yelled at her and stated to her that he treated her well because she worked hard. He also questioned her about if she has any idea what she did. The boss further told Ha Jung that she shouldn't have taken the project on if she couldn't handle the responsibility and if she knows what damages the company is facing because of her. The boss then asked Ha Jung what she is going to do now. He also demanded her to take responsibility for it immediately and to turn in her resignation. Ha Jung ended up falling into peer pressure and gave in her resignation. The day she turned in her resignation, as she fell asleep, exhausted from crying, she made a vow. The vow was that she wouldn't live worrying about what other thought anymore. That's definitely what happened, however. When she opened her eyes, she was here. We are then back in the present, and Ha Jung realizes that she's just a ridiculed duchess and wonders what's going on here. She also notices that the maids didn't wipe the room even though it's covered in dust. She further realizes that the bed is still not tidy and starts to make the bed. Once Ha Jung is done making the bed, she lays down on the bed and starts to realize that she's ostracized by the maids and stewards and is living the life of a duchess who doesn't get treated like one. As she scratches her head, she further knows that after she finally decided to not worry about what others thought anymore, she stuck as Duchess Chloe. Chloe then shouts out in annoyance and believes that she has a crappy life and that this is the greatest crisis in her 28 years of existence. We then see the next scene where we see Chloe waking up from sleeping. She also realizes that today's the eighth day since she has been here. Chloe then gets out of bed and decides to splash her face with some water. However, when she puts her hands in the water, she notices that it's ice cold. Chloe knows for a fact that they didn't offer her this ice cold water to give her a fresh start to the morning. We further learn that though she had been dropped randomly into this world, there was at least one source of relief. This body's memories were available to her, so she didn't need to get accustomed to new habits or manners. Chloe then plops onto a chair and starts to get ready for the day. She also starts to admire herself while looking into the mirror and believes that she is really pretty. As she sighs, she further wonders what use is it being pretty with this personality. We then learn that the moment Ha Jung peered into Chloe's memories, she realized her own personality was ordinary by comparison. The original Chloe cared about what others thought at least ten times more than she did. She didn't want to be hated by anyone but her scrunched shoulders wouldn't get fixed despite her many etiquette classes. Chloe's speech that seemed like she was mumbling to herself was always sneered at in society. 
Like someone with no sense of self, her tastes just followed the trends. There was even this one incident that occurred. Wine tasting was popular among the sons and daughters of nobles, so Chloe lied and said she knew wine very well and that her family owned their own distillery. She promised to show all of the nobles around. However, Chloe did not appear on the appointed day. In this way, her personality, formed out of the desire to not be hated, received hatred in spades. As Ha Jung sighs, she believes that Chloe was boring with so much charm, but has been unable to make use of it at all. She thought that it is pitiful. Suddenly, the head maid walks in with some other maids and apologizes to Chloe. She adds that she was so busy that she arrived late. All of a sudden, the head maid gets confused as she notices that Chloe is already dressed. Meanwhile, Chloe grits her teeth as she knows that this isn't true. Ha Jung is aware that the original Chloe never once dressed herself ever since she was young. Based on her personality, Ha Jung also believes that she'd probably be left shivering, unable to even think of putting on clothes herself. Ha Jung further knows that she's seen the maid's expression before of people looking down on someone. She knows this because it's the face her superiors and co-workers had as they handed off their unwanted projects to her. Chloe then decides that she can't just dismiss this and that she has to say something. As she gets up from the bed, Chloe says, Yes, I finished dressing, but that does not mean that you all are allowed to be so neglectful. This statement surprises the maids. Chloe further adds that they should come on time tomorrow, as failing to do so won't be forgiven. Upon hearing this statement, the head maid states to Chloe that she seems a little different than usual. She also starts to grin, while the other maids behind her start to laugh. Upon Chloe noticing this, she can tell that the question, what's the most she could do, is written all over the head maid's face. We further learn that the head maid's name is Colleen. Though the majority of the staff look down on Chloe, Colleen takes it to another level. She makes Chloe the laughing stock of the house. It is an everyday experience for Chloe, from putting her in dirty rags and calling it a house dress, to telling her the wrong time for meetings with the Duke, and constantly disobeying orders, complete with a haughty sneer. Ha Jung knows that she didn't actually experience all of it herself, but it still makes her angry. We also learn about the worst day for Chloe, which was the day when the maids were suddenly kind to her. Chloe was confused at first. However, she, a loner in the Duke's estate, was starved for affection and didn't even consider that the sudden change in attitude was suspicious. She longed for kindness and affection from the maids and Colleen. The next day, she was cast aside, as if it was all to prove a point. This made Chloe very confused. Ha Jung knows that Colleen was behind this scheme and believes that she's trying to deceive her again. Chloe then decides that she won't take it any longer and that she can't overlook this anymore. She also mentions to Colleen to come closer. Colleen listens and comes closer to Chloe. Once Colleen is close enough, Chloe slaps her across the face. Colleen is stunned upon getting slapped by Chloe. Chloe then states to Colleen that it is not her business what changes she undergoes. She adds that regardless of what happens to her, all she has to do is simply follow orders. Chloe also stares at the maids and says, This is because you dare to neglect your duties. Since Colleen is in charge, I punished her as an example. But if you're late again like this, it won't end with a slap on the cheek. Do you understand? You may leave now. Upon hearing this statement, the maids start to leave. As Colleen is staring at Chloe while the door is being closed, she is shocked. Once the door closes, Chloe takes a breath of fresh relief and is so happy that she did it. This is because Ha Jung Park, who had lived 28 years of her life caring what others thought, couldn't become a different person in a mere eight days. But she had taken a huge step by standing her ground, even if it was while wearing someone else's face. Chloe felt so good. Though she does feel a little guilty, when she saw the expressions of the maid's faces, she felt that it was a good thing that she did it. Chloe is also aware that she said that it wouldn't stop at one cheek next time, but if she's honest with herself, even that one slap was a feat right now for her. We further learn that in this world, the husband's and wife's responsibilities as noble couples are already decided. Besides the rare cases where a woman inherits a title, the husband takes care of external affairs, and the wife takes care of matters of the estate. This is comprised of managing the year's budget, supervising employees, and more. Unfortunately, 
Chloe's aptitude was not at all suited for the applicable duties. The supervision of the employees was quickly handed off to the head steward and housekeeper. On top of that, after Chloe made a few huge errors while managing the budget, the butler hired a financial specialist to take care of it. The Duke, Chloe's husband, was unaware of all of this. Because of this, Chloe could not punish or fire the staff. Suddenly, someone knocks on Chloe's door. Chloe is surprised that someone is knocking on her door and wonders who's visiting her at this hour. She then tells the person to come in. As the person walks in, Chloe realizes that it's Ellie. Chloe is aware that Ellie is the only one in this estate who's friendly to her. Chloe then asks Ellie what brings her here. Ellie mentions to Chloe that she wanted to apologize for yesterday. Chloe reassures Ellie that it's okay, as she knows that she didn't mean it. Chloe is also grateful and knows that Ellie behaves just like the other maids in front of them so that she doesn't get similar isolation like how she does. Chloe is further aware that Ellie still constantly looks out for her. Chloe then reassures Ellie that everything's okay. Upon hearing this reassurance, Ellie starts to cry and apologizes to Chloe. We then transition to the next scene where we see Chloe walking outside. As she's walking outside, she starts thinking about how it's good weather for a walk. Chloe also starts thinking about how she decided to live the way she wants, regardless of what others think. But then she opened her eyes to see she had turned into a duchess. We then learn that if Ha Jung is honest, besides the fact that she's used to her world, she doesn't have a particular reason to return there. She had no family or friends, and the few people she did keep in touch with were past co-workers. She lost her job, the only thing that had tied her down. As Chloe sighs, she decides that if she can't go back to being Hajong Park, then she at least wants to become a duchess who stops getting harassed. However, Chloe feels like there is something else that she wants. We further learn that when she was the self-conscious Hajong Park, there was only one moment when she could be herself, one thing she truly loved. However, since coming here, Chloe is aware that she lost access to it. However, she wants to rediscover it if she can. Chloe thinks she would be able to bear this sub-optimal situation if she had that at least. Chloe decides that she will ask her husband, Duke Battenberg, about it at dinner. We then switch to the next scene where we see Chloe having dinner with her husband. She is quietly sitting and eating her food. As she continues to eat her food, she takes a glimpse at her husband. After Chloe is done eating, she calls out to her husband and mentions to him that there is something she needs. This statement makes her husband flinch. Her husband then questions her about what it is. Chloe replies, I need tea. Chloe's husband is surprised to hear this request. Chloe is also aware that her husband is surprised, as this is the first time she's asked him for anything. We then learn about Chloe's husband, named Alphonse Battenberg, the head of the House of Battenberg. He's the perfect husband who has wealth, power, beauty, and ability, but he was disinterested in love. He rejected the rush of letters, filled with adoration and ardent proposals. Still, he needed a wife to continue the house of Battenberg. Alphonse's conditions for his wife were simple. A weak family that had no influence at all on the power of Battenberg, and a woman who wouldn't meddle with his affairs or fall in love with him. There was no woman more suitable than Chloe of the House of Grey. And so, it has been 13 months since her parents pushed her into an arranged marriage with Alphonse. It goes without saying that there was no love between them. In some ways, Alphonse could be considered the worst possible husband. The lofty position of Duchess, a large, beautiful estate, hundreds of dresses, and precious jewels were all given to Chloe. However, she was not given attention or affection. Chloe was scared of Alphonse. His eyes emanated a danger that pierced her like needles. Thus, Chloe, who was already timid, has never asked her husband for anything before. She couldn't even say she wanted to eat anything in particular. Alphonse was also aware that she never asked him for anything. But since he thought he was already fulfilling all his duties as a husband, he didn't bother with it. We further learn that before Chloe asked him for tea, Alphonse wondered what his wife was going to ask for. He thought maybe it would be jewels or a beautiful dress. However, when he learned that she just wanted tea, he was shocked. Chloe then explains to Alphonse that when she was young, she enjoyed having tea in the tea garden. She adds that she needs something that could soothe the pressures of a marriage that is still unfamiliar to her. 
Chloe also explains to her husband that tea is not expensive and that it probably wouldn't be a burden to the Battenbergs. However, before Chloe is able to finish her explanation, Alphonse tells her, enough. This makes Chloe flinch. He then takes a puff out of his smoking pipe and stares at Chloe in an uncomfortable way. Upon Chloe noticing Alphonse staring at her with an uncomfortable look, she starts thinking about how of course this would happen, since she just trifled with her husband's pride. As Alphonse is tapping his finger on the dinner table, he says, I will ask that an ample quantity of tea is ordered, and you do not need permission for every single purchase. You may purchase anything you please, within the budget. Chloe hesitantly confirms with her husband if it's anything she pleases. Alphonse confirms with her that it's anything. He also requests her to rest. We further learn that before Ha Jung possessed Chloe's body, she loved tea. After all the pressure of worrying about what others thought of her for 28 years, tea was the only refresher she had. Even if her boss scolded her endlessly, she could be happy for at least one moment with a single cup of tea. Though the amount of money she had invested in tea and her collection was not insignificant, they are, of course, no longer in her possession, having crossed into this world. We then see the next scene where Chloe is walking back to her room. As she's walking back to her room, she wonders what she can do, as it's not like that's the only thing she has lost. She is also excited to see what tea her husband is going to order. We then transition to the next scene, where we see that it's a brand new day, and the maids wish Chloe a good morning. As Chloe gets out of bed, she is pleased to hear this from the maids, and realizes that her personal maids are here this time. The maids then help Chloe get into her corset by squeezing the strings tight. They also tug her hair while brushing it. Once they are done assisting Chloe to get ready, she realizes that the maids' attitudes are terrible. However, she believes that this is definitely still faster and more convenient than getting ready alone. Suddenly, someone knocks on Chloe's door. Upon hearing the knocks on her door, Chloe mentions to the person to come in. The person turns out to be a maid. The maid then states to Chloe that the tea that was ordered yesterday has arrived. Chloe jumps out of her seat upon hearing this statement from the maid, as she's so happy to find out that her tea is finally here. She also runs down the stairs to grab her tea. Once she makes it to the front of the door, she is surprised to see so many things and wonders if her husband bought furniture. All of a sudden, the butler notices that Chloe has arrived and calls out to her. Chloe then tells the butler that she heard her tea has arrived. She also asks him which of these boxes is it. The butler is confused upon hearing this question and mentions to her that it's over there. Chloe is also confused upon hearing this response and starts to look around for her tea. As she's looking around for her tea, she questions the butler about where it is. The butler then points towards all of the boxes and says, They're piled over there, madam. Upon hearing this response, Chloe turns to take a look at the boxes and is still confused. She then is shocked as she can't believe that all of these boxes are filled with tea. Chloe then states to the butler that she's talking about tea. Tea that she will drink. Tea leaves that will be infused in water. The butler tells her that he understands and that everything piled over there is the tea leaves ordered by Alphonse. Upon hearing this response from the butler, Chloe starts to believe that her husband has an impossibly strong pride. She also decides that whatever her husband's intentions were, she should be grateful and that she should thank him at dinner. Chloe then commands the butler to have all the tea boxes moved to her room. Once all of the tea boxes are in her room, she decides to go with something easy for her first tea time. Suddenly, Ellie notices Chloe and calls out her name. Chloe also calls out to Ellie upon noticing her. She also starts thinking about how, of course, tea tastes better enjoyed with others. Chloe further mentions to Ellie that she's glad she bumped into her and asks her if she would like to have tea with her. Ellie hesitantly apologizes to Chloe, as now is not a good time for her. She adds that Miller has ordered her to do something and that she's very sorry. Upon hearing this apology, Chloe notices that Ellie's fingers are swollen and wrinkled from water. She also notices that her hair is a greasy mess, and her clothes are disheveled too. Chloe is aware that Ellie is the youngest of the laundry maids, so the senior maids often push their work onto her. She further knows that Miller, who manages the laundry maids, doesn't even care if the senior maids use the youngest maids like that. Chloe then decides that Ellie needs a break. 
As she leans over close to Ellie, she reassures her that it's okay as she's the mistress of this house. She adds to go tell Miller that she asked for her. Ellie understands her orders and decides to tell Miller. We then switch to the next scene, where we see that the maids are shocked to see Chloe in the kitchen. The maids then greet Chloe. Meanwhile, Chloe is aware that most noble ladies don't step in the kitchen. However, she believes that she isn't an ordinary noble. Chloe also knows that she doesn't get respect from anyone in the house, but the atmosphere in the kitchen, where she's rarely seen, is different. As the maids are amazed to see Chloe and are wondering why she's here, Chloe starts thinking about how she doesn't love having everyone's full attention. She also tells herself to think of it like a presentation. One of the maids then questions Chloe about why she's here. Chloe mentions to the maid that she came here to make tea. The maid is confused upon hearing this statement. Chloe realizes that this is strange, since she knows that in this empire, coffee is more popular than tea. She also doesn't know why that is the case. Chloe then clears the maid's confusion by confirming with her that she's here to make tea and questions her about if she can bring her a kettle. The maid agrees and brings Chloe a kettle. Chloe asks the maid if there is a bronze kettle by any chance. The maid questions Chloe about why does she need a bronze kettle. She also asks her if she can make do with an iron one, as they are quite busy right now. Chloe replies, When boiling water for tea, it's important that it is boiled quickly so that plenty of air remains. Iron kettles have low heat conductivity, so it boils too slowly. Bring me a bronze kettle. Upon hearing this response, the maid agrees. She then brings the bronze kettle. Chloe thanks the maid. She also turns and questions Ellie about if she can boil some water. Ellie agrees and starts to boil the water. Once the tea is ready, Chloe starts to look around for teaware. She quickly realizes that there's no teaware and only coffeeware. So, she decides to use the coffeeware and be satisfied with this for now. Chloe then pours the tea into a cup and takes a sip of the tea. However, Chloe doesn't like it at all. Ellie notices this and asks Chloe if she's all right. She also questions her about if it could be poison. However, Chloe reassures Ellie that this isn't the case and that the tea is just infused incorrectly. Chloe also realizes that the tea is so strong, which is making it undrinkable. She further starts to wonder why this is the case, as there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the tea leaves. And the utensils are clean. All of a sudden, Chloe gets an idea as to why this might be the case. She then questions Ellie about if she can bring her a glass of water. Ellie agrees and brings Chloe a glass of water. Chloe thanks Ellie for bringing her a glass of water. She then gulps some of it down. Once she is done drinking the water, she realizes that the water goes down easily and has a clear taste. A familiar taste. It's unmistakable to her. Chloe further realizes that the water here is soft water, not hard water. We then learn that when Ha Jung was in university, she was lucky enough to get a scholarship to study language in England for a short period. She had a hard time because the water was so unfamiliar. It didn't suit her taste, and the more she washed with it, the drier her skin became. Her roommate explained that the water in Europe was hard water that contained many minerals. Upon Chloe remembering this, she realizes that since the lifestyle here was similar to Europe, she automatically made tea the way she had in England. That's why it tasted bad. As Chloe flips an hourglass, she decides that this time, she will make tea the way she did back home, by infusing it for a only a short time. Once Chloe is done making the tea again, she pours it into a cup and takes a sip. This time, the tea tastes really good. She then pours some out for Ellie and states to her that she should try it. As Ellie takes a sip of the tea, Chloe explains to her that it's black tea. She adds that as she drinks it, she will sense the nutty and sweet essence of malt. Upon taking a sip of the tea, Ellie agrees with Chloe and tells her that it's delicious. She adds that the scent and the taste is so sweet. Chloe agrees with Ellie. She also questions her about if they should move somewhere more comfortable. Ellie agrees with Chloe. Meanwhile, the other maids are amazed and think that the tea smells good. We then learn that in the world of Ha Jung's past life, culture was quite developed, especially in Europe. That's because Europe had hard water, which tasted bad and wasn't healthy. Chloe is aware that in contrast, the water here is extremely clean. That's why there was no need for tea culture to develop. 
She is also aware that there are neighboring countries here that enjoy tea, but the Empire considers those countries to be savage. Chloe further wonders if the Empire's citizens, who see alcohol and coffee as enjoyable beverages, see tea as merely a lowly drink for savages. However, seeing Ellie, Chloe doesn't think it's hopeless. Suddenly, someone knocks on Chloe's room door. Chloe mentions to the person to come in. The person slams open the door. Chloe looks over to see who entered her room and realizes that it's Miller. She also notices that the air around her is formidable and wonders what brings her here so suddenly. Miller then states to Chloe that she came here because she had something to say to her. Chloe questions her about what does she want to say to her. Miller responds, I would prefer if you didn't take away my workers in the future. It disrupts our work. I have given Ellie a punishment. Please make sure to subscribe. Special thanks to all of my Patreon members. Why not watch another manhole recap on my channel by clicking on this video right here.